with all this traffic crap. You'd think with all of this technology that I could keep a freaking transporter working, but no. You know what? This ends today. You're not a chicken chipotle chimichanga. What the fuck? That shouldn't have happened. Maybe the target locking mechanisms need to be recalibrated. Incoming transmission. Gee, I wonder who that could be. What am I doing in your lap? And why was I in this position to begin with? Well, you're not in my lap anymore. You're just now finishing that sentence? I had to finish my F-bomb or else I get profanity blue balls. Anyway, what the fuck? Yeah, sorry about that. I was just working on my transporter here, and I guess it got Chicago mixed up with chimichanga. Or Chipotle. Ah, that old mix-up. Happens all the time. Really? Hell no, your transporter is a piece of shit. Oh. Tell you what, why don't I let you make it up to me? I'm about to start a review, and I only feel like doing about half the work. It depends. What movie? The Sixth Day. But it's not January. Besides, I thought you stopped doing Schwarzenegger Month. Yeah, you're right. Next time we're at a con, I'll just let your wrist and leave you in a bathtub for housekeeping to find. All right, sixth day it is. And you're editing. Because I'm a shit stain on the fruit of the looms of life. Welcome, science fiction fans, to another installment of That Sci-Fi Guy. And hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. In the year 2000, Columbia and Phoenix Pictures decided to milk the last remaining bit of box office potential out of an aging action hero who was already establishing a pattern of diminishing returns. But since Kevin Costner wasn't available, they went for Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, seriously, look it up. Like all great works of fiction, our movie opens with a quote from Genesis. Genesis? What the hell was that? No, oh, it's just a callback to my search for Spock review. I'm surprised you don't remember it. I wasn't really paying attention. For me, your Star Trek reviews didn't really turn a corner until later. <sighs> ah, good times, good times. And what better way to open a science fiction movie than with... Sports. This is Johnny Phoenix from the XFL. Well, I can already tell this movie's about cloning. Artificially duplicating their audience is the only way the XFL could have stayed on the air. You know, I talk about suspension of disbelief a lot. As a science fiction gentleman, it's kind of my area of expertise. But when you open your movie with a football league that would be dead six months after it premieres, yeah, that kind of shits all over suspension of disbelief. The rest of the movie could be awesome, but attaching it to Vince McMahon's ejaculations into the pool of professional football is kind of starting your movie out on the wrong foot. What? In addition to being a five minute commercial, this scene helps to establish some of the advances that abound in the sooner than you think. Those heads-up displays are actually kind of cool. When I brought my Google Glass to a football game, I just got my ass kicked. The star player, Johnny Phoenix, is brutally injured. His six cervical vertebra is crushed. It may not be as bad as you think it is. And for some reason, they let Merle from The Walking Dead ride along in his ambulance entirely unsupervised. Yeah, because that guy is completely trustworthy. Sorry, Johnny. You're gonna have to take one for the team. Meanwhile, it's Arnold's birthday, and he's checking in the mirror for signs of aging, because physical changes magically happen on the exact calendar day. Everybody knows that. Do I look any different to you? Nah, the real wrinkles don't come until after your governor. And then it's time for a very special birthday present from the missus. Lock the door. Oh, God. Dad, Dad! Oh, tot blocked. But he takes it pretty well, all considering. These scenes really help hammer home that Arnold is actually a good father. Yeah, they hammer it into unconsciousness. I can't focus on cheesy family moments and commercials about cheesy family moments at the same time. Sad old Oliver here is helplessly watching a commercial for something called Repet, a cloning service that can bring back your beloved family pet after it's been taken by old age. Or by a 1989 Chrysler LeBaron. Wow, even the dog can see that this is foreshadowing. Nacho flavored or regular? I think banana flavored. Good choice. She was about to say, too bad this is nacho banana and hit you in the balls again. Can I have a Sin Pal for your birthday? What's a Sin Pal? A life size doll. A make believe friend. Whoa, that's creepy. Um, that might not be Bride of Chucky or anything, but that's at least one of his one night stands. I think we just found the villain of the movie. You are getting low on milk. Thank you for ordering milk. You know, the internet of everything is cool and all, but 
Did he just put rotten milk back in the fridge? Throw that shit away, man! I love how the fridge is smart enough to tell him he's low on milk but can't tell that he's become a rancid, curdled slurry. We then meet Hank, Barney's sidekick slash hetero life partner, and they head out to work in Hank's self-driving car. Eh, it may not have been OnStar, but the fact that a cheesy turn-of-the-century Arnold movie had the foresight to predict self-driving cars is pretty impressive. OnStar will now disengage automatic drive. Are you ready? Yes! And Hank even uses the appropriate tone for talking to technology. At work, Arnold gets some sad news. They had to put Oliver to sleep. And I'm sure no one saw that coming. We then get introduced to Hank and Arnold's business, which apparently involves airlifting douchebags to scenic locations and then nearly running into mountains on the way back. Arnold is testing new remote controls, a convenience I'm sure will never come in handy later on in the film at all. We find out that due to a VIP they'll be transporting, the pilots are going to have to go through a few tests. Oh, and Drucker's office just called? Guess what? We're all going to be tested for drugs and alcohol. We're going to be tested? Not you guys, it's just us pilots. Boy, I sure am glad I didn't have to get tested before I took this job. There's this fungus that grows on the dark side of Tau Ceti 4. Shit will have you tripping for days. No kidding. And hey, you're a science guy. How long do you think it takes for a powdered horse scrotum to leave your system after you smoke it? Moving on. Yeah, you better. The technician walks Arnold and Hank through the test, which actually look a little too painless. Didn't feel a thing. Now sign this form, signing your life away. You're in both Hollywood and politics, so this should be nothing new to you. Now I need to check your vision, place your chin here, look straight ahead. Right here? Mm-hmm. And you blood test all your pilots? Pilots, drivers, security people, assistants, basically anyone who comes in contact with Mr. Drunk. Wait, 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 wait. So that futuristic cyborgy art that we've seen on all the posters is nothing more than him getting his vision tested? That would be like the Fast and the Furious movies advertising themselves with Vin Diesel at the DMV. Hank's a swell guy, and apparently a bit of a re-pet fanboy, so he offers to let Arnold go home while he pilots the VIP Mr. Drucker around. You know, I, I could take care of Drucker, that way you could have plenty of time to get Oliver clones. Um, they specifically asked for Adam. Yeah, I, mean, I know what specifically means. I also know that the bodyguards can't tell the difference. They never got our names. Oh. That's true. This, of course, goes flawlessly. Arnold then wakes up in a cab, a little confused and befuddled. I can't tell. Is he drugged, or is this just weird 90s editing? To be honest, I'm just a little disappointed the cab isn't being driven by some form of Robert Picardo. Huh? How did I get in this taxi? The door open. You got in? <laughs> Arnold heads into Repet, where he strolls right past the Godbothers. You save your soul, man. God doesn't want you to go in there. Don't go in there, man. When the God shouldn't have killed my dog. Atheist. He hears the sales pitch for a few minutes. Your pet's DNA is extracted from a lock of fur or a drop of blood and then infused on a cellular level into the blank. In the final stage, using Repet's patented cerebral syncoding process, all of your pet's thoughts, memories, and instincts are painlessly transplanted via the optic nerve. But then gets distracted by an even more ghastly scientific abomination. I might be back. You'll be back. So he buys one of these Sins Against Nature and heads home. I can sing songs. Go to sleep, Cindy. Would you like to sing with me? Go to sleep. You know, not to name drop the special or anything, but this is actually a really excellent example of Uncanny Valley. She's so close to human looking that the subtle imperfections are really off-putting. Oh, this is beyond Uncanny Valley. This is fucking Freak Show Canyon. That doll looks like the bug from Men in Black if it somehow killed one of the Brady Bunch daughters and wore its skin. On the way to the door, Arnold psychs himself up to tell his daughter that her precious pooch has passed. Spare us, sweetie, honey. Oliver had to go to heaven. Why, daddy? Well, you see, it's because... It's because, uh... Now is actually a pretty decent performance. You know, maybe I've misjudged Arnold all these years. Maybe he actually is capable of giving a very heartfelt and emotional performance. Shit, Oliver, why did he have to die? And the moment has passed. When he arrives, he finds that Oliver has indeed been repetted, and his birthday party is already in progress, which would be strange enough if it weren't for the fact that he sees himself inside enjoying it. More importantly, there's another one of those sim pals. Kill it! Kill it with fire! But he doesn't have long to freak out about this, because he's swiftly approached by the musclier Old Spice guy and a reject from the Matrix. Arnold's not feeling particularly cooperative, though, and gets stun gun for his trouble. Ah! Oops! Cindy fell down! 
at the doll. They drag him off, along with the doll for some reason. I'm Simpal Cindy. What's your name? But Arnold overpowers them. Ah, yes, thank God! I have the boo boo. Ugh. He steals his own car and gets the hell out of there. Unfortunately, Arnold then takes on an unwanted passenger. Stop the car! I'm Simpal Cindy. What's your name? Why do they still have that horrible doll? Is there some sort of importance to the story that I'm not seeing here? Maybe he wanted to be sure he didn't leave any DNA on it. You know, in case he tested it out. Know what I mean? Huh? Did you already forget how utterly creepy that doll is? Hey, a mouth is a mouth. And given his history with maids, would that really surprise you? Somebody do something about that damn doll! Not Trinity gets killed by a stray shot, but the chase is still off. Tired of being shot at, Arnold remembers that one weird trick to get rid of an armed pursuer. <laughs> yes? You know, for a good guy, Arnold is a bit of a sadistic bastard here. Merle then uses the pit maneuver, which sends Arnold's car careening into the woods and off a cliff. But Arnold's not out of the game yet. Okay, now he is. Please, he'll be fine. Arnold has gills. Why else do you think he talks like that? We cut to a press conference being held by Robert Duvall and some sort of post-super soldier serum Bob Saget. And just like in far too many Robert Duvall roles, he's playing an old guy in a suit with a high-maintenance wife.